Hello and welcome to another segment of Open House here at Community Media. I'm Raymond Galker and this is a show that we bring people in from the community. We open our doors and they share with us the fantastic things they're doing for Adams and York County to make this place an awesome place to live. And we're bringing back a special guest of ours, uh, Jason Martz from the Gettysburg National Military Park in Eisenhower National Historic Site, uh, becoming a regular visitor with us. And, yeah. and we're excited about that, Jason. Yeah. Uh, we're loving our relationship with uh, the National Park. And we're looking at trying to do something monthly uh, where we could update uh, the community, what's going on. And we have an exciting uh, show for you where uh, we're going to uh, possibly give you some teasers of some things that might that are going to be happening. Uh, but Jason said that he can't tell us everything. And we're looking at uh, the summer, the spring hours starting to come up. So um, Jason Martz, from he's a community communication specialist for the national, the Gettysburg National Military Park in Eisenhower Historic Site. Welcome, Jason. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Glad to be back. I'm glad, we're glad to have you here in the house. So the last time we spoke, um, you gave us an update on the little round top and talked about uh, the winter programs and hours that you had. Mm -hmm. um, can, can you tell us how the activities went for the winter uh, programs that you had? The, the winter programs that we had this year, uh, to, to say they were spectacular uh, is, is about right. Um, the longstanding programs uh, that we've been offering for many years now, called the Winter Lectures, uh, have been very popular uh, over, the, uh, over the winter months when we're typically not doing a whole lot outside. The weather doesn't allow us to do a whole lot outside on the battlefield, so we bring the, those stories inside and uh, offer those on the weekends through the months of uh, January and February and a little bit uh, here into March. But some of the other programs that uh, we started to lean into last year and really expand this year have been met with uh, a lot of very happy people. Um, meaning what we're, what we're trying to do is expand the learning opportunities for the battlefield and, and all of its history and all of its stories to those who may have different uh, necessary abilities, okay? So for those who, who need a quiet experience uh, at the Museum and Visitor Center, we're off, we'd off, uh, last year we offered just one sensory friendly day. This year we offered two. Uh, where for about two hours uh, on a weekend day uh, throughout here in the winter, uh, we were able to go in uh, into the cyclorama painting, the huge 360 degree uh, painting depicting Pickett's Charge, and just turn everything off except the lights. No noise, no sound, no sound effects, no narration, nothing. So it's just lights up and it allows those visitors who need that quieter space an opportunity to really soak it in. And then the same thing with the museum as well. All of the movies and, and different things that are causing different noises, sound effects, and narrations throughout the entirety of the museum from day to day, those too are turned off. So it's just a nice, quiet, relaxing experience, uh, and those went over very, very well. Uh, this year. So one last year, two this year. Um, and then beyond that, uh, we had uh, special education days for those who are sight impaired, another one for those hearing impaired, and for those who have English as a second language. And we've been able to bring those uh, visitors in and be able to bring the history of the battle and, and all of them, the amazing stories that go along with it to 
audiences maybe that would not have come in under normal circumstances. And that was completely new this year? Correct. All of that was completely new. The only carryover as far as these, uh, these special programs would have been the sensory friendly. One was done last year, two was done this year, but all of the um, auditory, uh, sight, and English learners, all of that was brand new this year. So I'm, I'm assuming that that gave an opportunity for different interaction with that type of person. Absolutely. And, um, and that interaction would have been a more personal interaction, mm -hmm. uh, possibly a more rewarding, in a sense, interaction yes. between uh, uh, your staff and, and, and those individuals. Yes. So you had a large number of people? Yes, we did. We're, we're very, very happy with how many people were able to come in uh, for those various uh, special experience days. And uh, it's clearly something that uh, uh, the, the community is very interested in, um, basing simply on the numbers and, and, and the engagement and how excited and happy uh, everyone was during these events, knowing full well that they were specifically designed with those uh, audiences in mind. And they greatly appreciated that. Mm -hmm. It Very was much. their special day. It was. And did you have uh, a number of people come in from outside of the area? Now, I'm not sure exactly what the breakdown uh, would be. Uh, but we were very pleased with how many people were able to partake. And I could just imagine the smiles that were on their face, mm -hmm. you know, from that special moments that you guys provided. Absolutely. So, um, and the, the nice thing, Jason, that I see is that uh, as a communi communication specialist, um, you guys continually try new things. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's... Uh, uh, stuff that you have going on to uh, make the immersion mm -hmm. experience uh, more and more um, heightened. Yes. Yeah. I think so. that's, a, that's, a, that's a good way to put it and uh, continually try to tell not just the, the, I don't want to call them the ordinary stories because there is no such thing, but there's the the basic story of the battle, the battlefield, and, and the armies and the, and the uh, different generals and so forth. But there's so many other layers to that. Uh, so when you start to peel away the onion, if you will, that's when we really start to be able to get into some, some new, uh, some interesting, and some different uh, stories that highlight folks uh, and stories that typically don't necessarily have the opportunity to come to the forefront. And you do that mainly in your winter lectures, or do you have a strategy to do that throughout the year with various things? It really is throughout the year. So uh, one of the things that we utilize with the slower winter months uh, is, is through the mediums of the winter lectures, and we can talk about different things from all over the Civil War, um, not just Gettysburg, uh, but also special audiences. Uh, during the slower months, we can certainly uh, make, make that a very special occasion, whereas maybe in the, in the busier months, we wouldn't necessarily be able to have that same ability. Um, so it's very, very personalized, like you were saying earlier. Uh, but taking those same ideas and those same themes to programming throughout the year, and that's certainly something that we're looking forward to be doing uh, again this year. So the experience of sitting at a lecture um, is, is amazing. I, I really didn't understand it until I was able to experience that this weekend. And um, telling a story um, is an art, mm -hmm. um, and it's the oldest form of communication. Mm -hmm. And to sit there and have someone be able to have your imagination being guided, and your emotions, and the questioning of what it must have been like, is an amazing experience. Um, and uh, 
you get to be an artist at it as a communication specialist. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, 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 to be able to arouse someone's emotions uh, must be rewarding. Very much. Yeah. yeah. And you've been working on that type of experience also on things that you have on the web for people to experience. Correct. You've got a lot going on. Always. Yes. Yeah, there's, there's really no, even though there might be slower visitation times throughout the year, the staff really don't have down times. Uh, either we're doing things throughout the year, it doesn't matter what season it is, or we're preparing for the busy season and the anniversary programs and all kinds of different things that uh, we have on our schedule that until we have details, we really can't release anything to the public because there just isn't anything to say just yet. Uh, so for instance, you know, like we're planning, uh, the interpretive staff are planning the summer season for, for the interpretive programs, the ranger programs. Same thing with the battle anniversary on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Uh, we're also looking to do uh, a little bit on the weekends before and the weekends after. Uh, so those are details that are, that are still being worked through with the staff. Uh, but uh, this, this year, this summer, uh, this spring, and really throughout the entire year, really does look to be a very exciting year, a, very, uh, a, a year with a lot of new stuff. And, and that, that can be taken very broadly. And when you're talking new stuff, you're talking about adding to the immersive experience a person's going to have. Absolutely. Lots, lots of different opportunities, uh, different stories, uh, and certainly different places. Now you got me excited. <laughs> I hope you guys are excited because I, I think um, you're talking about some incredible incredible experiences and uh, a lot of activity. So um, I've just gotten to know you over almost a year yet. And um, I don't know how the park really works. And um, right now you would think that it's your all season, but it's not your all season in a sense. Because as you're saying, you your staff is so busy preparing to create the best experience for people coming up in spring and summer, et cetera. Now, you just try to get a hold of Jason uh, in, in July when every, <laughs> you, you know, when everyone in your staff is implementing the strategy that you're putting together now. Um, it, it's like, um, you know, it's go time. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. and and it's just um, incredibly busy and for you and your staff during the summer. Yeah, yeah. For us, all the heavy lifting is now. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time we get to the anniversary, then it's like you said, it's 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 go time. But for us, all the hard work uh, has has led up to the event. Now it's just a matter of uh, executing and and making sure everyone's in the right place at the right time and. Uh, make sure everyone's safe and has a, has a really fantastic experience. Safety first. Safety first. And uh, that could lead us into uh, a little round top, but before we get there, hmm? um, you know, it must be such a thrill during uh, July or any time that you're implementing something that you have strategized and, and uh, planned and put together. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's, it's almost like playing a sport. I mean, you practice to the point that when, when things happen, you're not thinking, you're just Correct. making it react. Yep. And the thing about any type of uh, dramatic production that someone might have been involved in where they do the same thing. They practice their lines, they mm -hmm. practice their cues, mm -hmm. and then boom, they go. Um, that's usually like a sporting event an hour or so. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're looking at is, uh, um, you know, come July, it's like really intense uh, before you get to July 1st, but you're looking at the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, mm -hmm. Well, a couple of days before and a couple of days after, 
that's like a game time for you guys. Absolutely. So the, the rush and the excitement and the emotion must be really rewarding for your staff and yourself. It is. It, it's, uh, it, it makes all of the work leading up to it worth it. Um, to be able to bring those stories and, and integrate the battlefield physically um, in those stories. It's, there's no such thing as, I think for a lot of us, that yes, it's a job, but it's not work. And, and so for us, it's, it's very meaningful. And we almost, I think, play off of the energy of the visitors and that energy goes back and forth uh, between the staff and, uh, and the visitors. Really, no matter what, what uh, division they're coming from, it could be interpretation, uh, where all the park rangers, kind of the face of, of the park, but most definitely the, the maintenance crew, um, those who are the ones who are taking care of the physical battlefield, whether it be mowing or trimming or uh, erecting new fencing to replace ones that have deteriorated over the years, or the ones who are taking care of all of the structures, all of the historic structures um, at both Gettysburg and Eisenhower. It's just they, the pride that they have um, is seen in the details uh, of what they do. And, and I'm thank, thank, I, thankfully, I'm in a, in a position to be able to get up close and, if you will, behind the scenes with those folks uh, as they are continuing to maintain and uh, keep those buildings looking uh, as good as possible. And, and there's that physical connection to the past. So it's, it's, very, pri it's very prideful for those uh, folks. They take it serious. Very serious. And their reward is to be able to see someone questioning um, about what happened here, what happened there, mm -hmm. and their face changing when uh, something's explained to them, and, mm -hmm. and they do have a chance for the visitor to have that experience of imagination and, and, and uh, um, feeling as if they were there. What would it have been like, mm -hmm. you know? So it's very, you guys are serious about what you do. Um, and take pride in it. Absolutely. And th the crazy thing is, is you keep on doing more and you keep on trying to do what you do um, because your goal is that immersion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's exciting. But, but you never give, you add, but you don't take away. Add more and more, right? It's, it's, a, it's a lot of responsibility at uh -huh. the end of the day. Yes. Yeah. You guys do a great job. Thanks. Um, because uh, the Park Service is very much a part of our community. Very much a part of our community. So, um, winter hours? Winter hours uh, for the uh, Museum and Visitor Center. Uh, that actually came to an end yesterday. A uh, little one extra day of winter hours with the uh, with leap day, uh, leap year. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're we're going now into what we call just regular hours, which goes from March 1st through the end of November. Uh, and so the museum and visitor center hours uh, expand to 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., whereas the winter hours, December, January, February, are. 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So we get an, an extra hour on both ends. So um, you will be replacing the winter lectures with lectures and opportunities that happen outside rather than inside. Correct. Yeah, the, the winter lectures are really the only thing that take place uh, with any uh, consistency inside. Everything else, outside. Mm -hmm. And that'll, that'll start up uh, with a number of uh, programs that we have uh, that are, that are constants that the most visitors who are familiar with Gettysburg look forward to. Uh, so those are um, the Spring Ranger programs. Uh, they begin the first weekend of April. Uh, living history programs, uh, volunteers who come in to portray uh, Union, and Civil, uh, Union and Confederate soldiers, uh, that also starts the first weekend in April. Uh, the Wills House also reopens for the season 
That happens on Friday, actually, not Saturday, but Friday, uh, April 5th. And that uh, the Wills House is open uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays from April 5th through November 17th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And, of course, if anybody has any questions about anything related to visiting the park, they can get to your website. Absolutely. Everything, everything is on either the Gettysburg National Military Park website or the Eisenhower National Historic Site website. Okay. Um, any one in particular thing that you always look forward to yourself? I th I, for, for me, I think it's, it's, the, it's having visitors come back as the weather starts to change. You know, for, for me, I'm not a big fan of the, the dark and the cold anymore. When I was younger, different, slightly different story, but now, eh, not so much. So I really look forward to uh, the change in the weather, the change in the temperature, and with that comes visitors, and it, and it, feels, it feels like Gettysburg again. So the park service are really extremely people oriented, and that interaction is is what they like to get buzzed off of. That's that gives them their their excitement. Oh yeah, the interaction with the visitors means a lot for sure. But then you also have the beauty of the park right now. Right. Are you seeing things starting to get green? Not yet, not yet. Uh, the only thing I think that. Uh, has popped up through the ground, and I don't know if it's really anywhere around the battlefield, but uh, just the, uh, I think the dandelion, not the dandelions, no, no, daffodils, wrong D. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are the only things I think coming up through the ground uh, yeah. right now. So I think we need probably at least two or three more weeks yet. Yeah, I went outside the house, Jason, and uh, we have a, an old walnut tree and a catapa tree. And supposedly, um, when people were, got married back in history, they would take two trees and they'd plant them in front of the house. So um, we have these two trees, and I looked down, and the daffodils were mm -hmm. four or five inches tall already. Right. And it was like, when did that happen? Right. You know? So yeah. this, this is great. Um, okay, so. Um, Let's look at, can we talk about a little round time? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So here we have some pictures that we got off the web. Jason, I think uh, if you would talk us through these. Yeah, so uh, we we're, we're adding uh, pictures uh, for the Little Round Top Rehabilitation Project uh, to our website. Um, we're, 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 we've finally gotten caught up. Uh, so what you're able to see on the website right now is everything through the end of January. Okay? February hasn't made it onto the website yet, but that probably will happen as early as maybe late next week. Uh, we'll get everything for, for February up. Um, but what you're seeing here is uh, this is Sykes Avenue, uh, the road there on the right-hand side. And you're seeing the, the new curbing going in. Okay. And this curbing is going to be lining uh, Sykes Avenue the entire way uh, from the southern end of Little Round Top, uh, the southern end of Sykes Avenue to the northern end. And what this is going to do ultimately, and we're going to see it a, a little bit here uh, in a few other pictures that shows it maybe a little bit better, uh, but it's basically in, in an effort to keep uh, traffic moving in certain areas uh, so that they're directed to the formal parking. Because what, what has happened over the years and really uh, was part of the, maybe one of the top two or three issues with the need to rehabilitate Little Round Top in the first place is that informal parking, meaning they were, visitors were able to park on the shoulders uh, of Sykes Avenue, both sides, uh, left and right of the road, and on both slopes. So there was really never a time where you couldn't find parking. It wasn't the formal parking, it was the informal parking that visitors just took it upon themselves 
Again, this is, this is decades. Everyone has done it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it's just the way it has been. But when they got out of their cars, got out of their vehicles, uh, the only way to get to certain places on Little Round Top proper was to basically go straight through the brush or straight up the hill uh, through trees. And over time, that's what caused what we call social trails. And over the years, those social trails got very worn down, and eventually a lot of erosion started to happen there. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And so we've taken it. Uh, all of the formal parking on the summit has remained. There, there, are, no, there are no changes as far as uh, car parking is concerned. But what we've added, and this is what you see here in, in the picture as well, is this large retaining wall on the east side, uh, on the east side of the hill. This is the side of the hill far away from where the fighting would take place on the western slope or the summit down the western slope. So this is on the off side. But this is a location where buses are able to now safely drop off their passengers their passengers now are able to get off the bus onto a nice six-foot sidewalk, okay? And it, it doesn't show up here yet, uh, but it's, it, it actually is almost finished now, where that sidewalk then will allow folks to then safely walk to either end and cross uh, Sykes Avenue at new crosswalks and then be able to access the summit from there. Whereas before, it was kind of a free-for-all. And safety was not up to par. And, and through this new, um, this new stylization, if you will, of Sykes Avenue, we're hoping that a couple things will take place as far as safety is concerned. Uh, we believe that traffic will also slow down naturally. Uh, but we're also eliminating that informal parking because thinking about the resource. Why did we have to do this rehabilitation at all? Well, it was, it's a domino effect. If, if so many people in so many vehicles over decades and decades are allowed to park wherever they want to, and there were never any rules or regulations against it, that's what happens, that the, the amount of people the amount of vehicles, the wear and tear on the resource, that's what wore Little Round Top down. And we had to bring it back uh, to a place where for longevity's sake and for the uh, protection of that resource, the reason why people want to come to Little Round Top in the first place, we had to take it upon ourselves to save the site. It was literally being loved to death. You may hear that term quite a bit. Uh, throughout very popular locations within the National Park Service. But the one thing I want to note here in this picture, we're looking north. Uh, so this is the, the, the approach road, if you will. The, the summit is there at the top. You can see a, a white construction vehicle there uh, at, the, at the top and the, on the left. And on the right there is that retaining wall for the, for the bus parking. What you see here is a Sykes Avenue that is now 15 feet wide. The important thing to note, though, is that Sykes Avenue, historically speaking, from its very, uh, from the very first time that it was incorporated into the battlefield, has always been 15 feet wide. So the road width is the same as it's always been. However, this informal parking that I, that I mentioned earlier, on the left and right were these rain gutters. Uh, originally built of large uh, rocks placed strategically so that the rainwater would be able to run down the hill. Those gutters, those rain gutters, had been paved over so many times that it looked as if Sykes Avenue was much wider than it really was. And so Sykes Avenue looked like it may have been 22 or 23 feet wide because of those paved gutter, uh, rainwater gutters that have been paved over so many times. And then all of that was at the level ground, level with the ground. So it was very easy 
and almost it made logical sense for, for visitors to just pull over onto the side. Mm -hmm. So again, there was, there was no way to fix it. There was no way to, to monitor it. And it got wider and wider. It, and, it, <laughs> and it just got worse and worse. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is the reason, this is the answer. Um, we're not in the short term game, we're in the long term game. And that's why <clears throat> you see uh, an element like this being brought into the Little Round Top Rehab Project. The side um, concrete boundaries there, I don't know what you would call them. There's probably a Jason name for that. But so, the, so the curbs, yes. <clears throat> the, the, the granite curbs um, are leveled and, and placed where they need to go and then concrete is brought in after they are set in place to hold them in place. So that's, that's what you're seeing on kind of both sides of the, uh, now the we'll, granite curbs. And when we saw this, they were seen larger up top where the bus mm -hmm. uh, leaves people off. And they conf conform to the landscape. Correct. So what you're, you're, you're seeing, you're going to see two different, this is, this, this is somewhat difficult to explain without actually physically being on site, <clears throat> but the road surface didn't change. So, so the, the road basically adheres to the hill. So the geography of the hill, if there's a little up, a little down, a little flat, the road follows the geography of the hill. The sidewalks, however, um, are designed with the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, uh, requirements in mind. So those have to have a certain level of either flat or can only be at a certain pitch. Uh, they can only max out at, I think, uh, 10 degrees. Uh, and if you do have a, a, an area where the sidewalk has been at a pitch of 10 degrees, it can only go so far before you then have to have a section that's flat again before there's another pitch to it, another angle to it. So what we're looking at on the bus retaining wall versus what Sykes Avenue is, is the difference in some cases between where the sidewalk needs to be in order to maintain ADA compliance, but the road doesn't necessarily have to match that. So in some places, the sidewalk might actually be a little higher or it might be a little lower, again, to maintain compliance. But each one of these curbs had to be engineered for the exact place you were going to put them. Correct. They they all have uh, numbers um, on them, and, and, it's, and it's 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 as if you were to take apart a historic structure, and every brick would be numbered and and in in some kind of sequence, so that when you would put it back together again, each brick would go back in its correct place well this is it kind of works like that it's a it's it's a big puzzle right it's a but big you 3D had to, puzzle you had to make the pieces well there we did nothing to duplicate no 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 yeah they, these are all these are all brand new but the um the granite is uh historically accurate to granite that was used um at the little round top parking area uh for those who remember uh before this project got started at the summit of the hill the car parking was nose in to the left and as you got there, there was granite curbing right there that then came be next to the sidewalk. So that was the division between the sidewalk and the road surface. So that granite has simply weathered and is much darker as opposed to what you're seeing here, but it's the same stuff. So, so we're, we're using, if you will, existing historic products but when it comes out of the quarry, it's nice and bright white. It hasn't been uh, weathered over time. So the, the formal parking, you know, the informal parking made it so it was easier to, to park somewhere. Mm -hmm. the, of course, you foresaw that uh, the amount of formal parking that you have, is it going to be increased so... Um, it kind of bounces out the informal parking? So the informal parking is, is gone. Boom. Okay, that's, that's gone. That, that's part of, 
the, the overall reasoning behind having to do this rehabilitation project in the first place. However, all the formal parking at the summit remains exactly the same. In fact, we're, we're formally adding four new bus parking spaces that did not exist okay. before. Although there was room at the summit for, for a variety of, of vehicles on the right-hand side or the east side where this bus retaining wall is located, it was kind of a, a free-for-all there as well. And it wasn't, very little safety was incorporated into it. So for those who got off a bus, and if a bus was pulled over to the right, that first step, maybe the second step, was a bit of a doozy. Uh, same thing with those uh, passengers getting out of uh, cars. Um, you had to kind of watch your step because there wasn't safety necessarily incorporated into that uh, structure. Now, it's all about safety. Mm -hmm. So on this, uh, there's not gonna be a sidewalk? Yes, in fact, there, there is. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, where you can see- Over uh, here? Yep, right there. Uh, what you're looking at is a little bit farther south uh, above the first orange cone, I'm gonna stand up and, and yeah, point if that's okay. <clears throat> and what we've got, we've got uh, Sykes Avenue coming up and just up here where you see the orange and blue tarps, uh, this is what's known as Chamberlain Avenue. That's the uh, paved sidewalk uh, that connects Sykes Avenue with the 20th Main Monument. Uh, so that, is going to be an area of sidewalk that is going to now connect with Chamberlain Avenue going off to the right into the trees. The sidewalk then is going to align immediately to the right of this curbing and connect to the ADA sidewalk here at the bus parking area. And all of that, all of that is now ADA. So it is now a system for those with mobility issues that can connect to the summit and down to Chamberlain Avenue. And that is brand new, that did not exist and before be, this rehabilitation. And it will be safe. Absolutely. Absolutely safe. Absolutely. And then you have drainage yeah. that will occur. Yeah, so that's, that's what you see here, the, the notches in the, uh, in the granite curbing. That's going to allow water, rainwater runoff to just uh, uh, spill out off to the sides, uh, and those are every so often so that there isn't a whole lot of rain with, with all of its energy and inertia and so mm -hmm. forth. So every maybe 20 or 30 feet, I think, uh, there's a notch which then allows the rainwater to just naturally uh, come off the road. Cool. Okay, yeah, this is what we're talking about. Uh, the, here on the left-hand side, you can see the, the curbing, uh, and the tarps are actually covering fresh uh, concrete that would have just been poured to hold those curbs in. Uh, but the distance, this, this empty space between the curbing and the bus retaining wall, all of that is now um, ADA sidewalk. So that, entire, that entire space is now sidewalk. And the buses will be pulled? Correct, yeah, the buses will pull just to the left of where you see the curbing and the black tarps, and there will be room for four buses. This is gonna be beautiful. It really is. It, it, it's just up, I, in fact, I was just up there yesterday, and again, most of the uh, sidewalk there that you just see is as kind of dirt and gravel and fill, um, most of that's done. And it looks great. Okay, so here we are, we're a little bit farther up Sykes Avenue. Again, you can see the, uh, the blue and orange tarp. That's actually uh, the initial framing uh, and, and the base layer of where that new sidewalk is, is, is now. Um, so you can see a little bit better here from this picture, uh, the bus retaining wall, and it comes down here to the right, and then it kind of kicks off to the right, and that's where it will connect or in fact it does now, connect to Chamberlain Avenue that goes all the way out to the 20th Main. So are you saying that the, saw, the sidewalk is, is finished there? I mean, just- It is now, yeah. yeah. Uh, with, a, with a few tweaks, but it's it, uh, everything uh, for that sidewalk largely finished up this week. 
Okay, this is a little bit farther down on the north, uh, the northeast, what would be the northeast corner of the bus retaining wall. And again, you can see the curbing is, is set. Uh, it's all level, all the pieces are set in like, like the giant uh, puzzle, puzzle board, uh, but the concrete uh, that holds the, uh, holds those pieces in place, that hasn't come yet, but uh, again, that's all, it's all there now. Okay, here we're on the southeast corner. Uh, so this would be this, the section if you follow the uh, black and orange tarps down to the right corner, bottom right corner, that'll take you down to the 20th main. Uh, so again, all of this is beautiful ADA sidewalk uh, that allows for uh, a logical connection for areas of the battlefield, areas of Little Round Top specifically that were never connected before for those with mobility issues. So it's going to be accessible for the first time. And when you look at this, um, that looks steep. But you're saying, and you could see when this line goes back, mm -hmm. that it actually had to be laid out at uh, 10, 10 degrees mm -hmm. uh, fall and only so for so long mm -hmm. and then had to flatten out again. Yep, and that can, yeah, you're, you're right. That can actually be seen, that flat section, you can see it right here. Mm -hmm. And then it goes down and then I think just off of the wall is gonna be another, another flat. So it doesn't show up in this picture, but again, it's, you can only go so far based on the pitch, like third, 20 or 30 feet, I think, okay. before it has to flatten out again to give folks a chance to rest if needed. And as you said, when you look at the road coming into the curb, some places it's all but level, mm -hmm. other places it gets higher mm -hmm. so that you can maintain the accessibility requirements of that. Uh, yeah, correct. It's, it, looks a it may look a little strange here at this point, but you have to remember that the road doesn't necessarily have to comply with anything ADA related. So the road is following the geography of Little Round Top itself. Mm -hmm. The sidewalk, however, needs maybe a little bit extra space uh, higher or maybe even a little lower to get the, uh, the angles, the pitch, uh, and so forth to maintain ADA compliance. So yeah, it, it may look a little weird here, but I assure you when it's done, mm -hmm. you won't notice it at all. No. no, but we can see what you're talking about. Okay, just another view uh, looking north. Uh, you can see the bus retaining wall on the right and all of that black tarp and uh, orange tarp, uh, all of that is uh, where that new sidewalk is located. Okay, another view, this is on the northeast corner, uh, looking towards the curbing and towards the wall. Uh, so at my back, I, this, is, this is my picture, I, I took this a, few, a number of weeks ago, but uh, my back then would be to the car parking. So right behind where you see the camera placement would be the line of car parking that, is, that was there and still is there, all of that is, is maintained. But here again, it's just a matter of, of being able to see what the, what the curbing looks like, how it all fits together. Uh, and this is before the, it's the, the concrete is poured. And this is where the buses will be leaving people off? Correct. And they'll park there too. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to put three buses? Four. Four. Are, are they pulling in or are they pulling right behind each other? They're, it's, it's parallel parking. It would be, they would be in behind each other. Just another, another angle of kind of the, the same thing. Okay, so here we're looking uh, from, uh, from the north, looking south. And again, you can just see the, the curbing being put together like a, like a big jigsaw puzzle. And then that's basically the opposite direction. We're, we're now looking north uh, towards the uh, end of the bus retaining wall. And right here, um, here at this edge, and if you were to go straight across Sykes Avenue, that's uh, the second uh, crosswalk. There's one at either end of, of the bus parking and, and car parking that, uh, that match up. Okay. All of it's ADA. Look how beautiful that is, mm -hmm. that wall and 
the, the, the colors of all of the stone that was chosen uh, was chosen very deliberately in order to match as closely as we could with the natural stone of Little Round Top and, and the battlefield as a whole. So that's why you're seeing this darker gray, but along, also along with that, you're also seeing here in the, uh, the veneer stone, uh, the facing stone um, on the bus retaining wall, there's, there's some light browns, some darker browns, lighter grays, darker grays, because all of those, uh, those colors can be found in the stones naturally around Little Round Top. Okay. Uh, here you can see that the Sykes Avenue is going to continue uh, north uh, towards Wheatfield Road. So you're going, this is the point where you're leaving uh, the parking, the formal parking area. There will not be any sidewalk uh, on the right-hand side. However, on the left-hand side, it's not, you're not really able to see it here, uh, but there is going to be a path. Uh, which is the secondary material that we are using on Little Round Top. The first material is the concrete. If you see the concrete, you know that that's ADA for anyone with mobility issues. And then the second material is what's known as a stabilized aggregate. Uh, it's uh, two different sizes of small kind of brown uh, stone uh, mixed together on site, packed down, and then a a glue, an adhesive, is applied to it to keep it stable. Um, so that is going to run along the left side of Sykes Avenue to allow folks to then get down to the monuments. Uh, there's, a, there's a group of monuments about halfway down the hill, uh, and folks will now be able to easily access those monuments, whereas those were kind of forgotten um, per the old uh, Sykes, uh, the, the old uh, little round top. Accessible? No, no, no. There. Here's 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 the double-edged sword, of, and and these are difficult decisions that we had to make. The original plans actually called for an incredible amount of ADA accessibility built into this project. However, in certain areas of the hill. Um, either on the summit, uh, where all the monuments and, and cannons are located, or here along uh, the roadside, either so much extra fill, dirt and, and rocks and so forth, would have had to have been brought in, that it would have, in some cases, changed the height of some of these areas by as much as five feet. Ooh. Yeah. So we had an opportunity really at every step of this project to say to the contractor, yes, we're good with this, or no, we're, we're not good with this. The changes were too extreme one way or the other. But the ones that were too extreme were also associated with trying to add as much ADA accessibility as possible. And that's where we had to pull it back because it, it would change the dynamic of the hill so drastically, one way or the other, that we'd said, we, we can't do this. Right. We, we can't. Be true? We can't be true to the, to the story of the hill, the men who fought there. So in, in, in many cases, um, and that was one of them, uh, where this uh, trail, this path going down the, uh, the west side of the north slope of Sykes Avenue had to be changed from concrete ADA to the stabilized aggregate because we just could not maintain compliance because of the historic integrity of the hill. And that's how life goes. Yes. Sometimes you can, most times you have to make, uh, you have to be flexible and adapt. Yes, and, and that's, that's what we had to do. But you've offered a lot more possibilities than was there. Absolutely. The, in fact, the total amount of ADA accessibility has increased 20, about 25%. But maybe even more important than the number, uh, the percentage, if you will, is that all of it is connected. It's not a piece here and a piece here and a piece there. 
it is all connected. It is an entire system. So anyone who had mobility issues in the past who maybe could not access certain areas of Little Round Top, so much more of the hill is now available for visitation and experience. And, and safe. It's, and safe, very safe, and it's, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. So there's an entire stretch of Little Round Top from the 20th Main all the way up to the summit and down to the 44th New York Monument, the Castle Monument as it's often called. All of it, it's connected and it's safe and we're really excited about that part of it because the parts that we were able to make accessible for all intents and purposes, we're replacing kind trails. So the stuff that you're gonna see there now is the same stuff that was there. It's just oriented slightly differently so, so that we could accommodate ADA regulations. And what you were able to create was the accessibility of the areas that were the most popular places people wanted to go. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, you know, the places that you weren't really able to comply with were not the most popular. Well, I, it's, it's, not, it's not that things are, are popular or not popular. It's, it's were they or were they not accessible. Right. right. And, and, mm -hmm. and those are the areas where we were able to, with confidence, be able to say, we are not going to take away from anything that would have been here before. We are simply replacing in kind. Mm -hmm. We're just doing so in a smart fashion for accessibility purposes and safety purposes mm -hmm. without taking away from the integrity of the hill. And in doing so, you were still able to create an awesome experience. I, I'm gonna go so far as to say a way more awesomer experience <laughs> yeah. than, than, than before, mm -hmm. because we, we're, what we've done is we've taken a, a look at the entirety of Little Round Top. Not just the summit, but the south slope, the north slope, the western slope, and incorporate all of those places that the public has essentially told us that they wanted to get to. There just wasn't anything formal as far as a trail or path to get there. Mm -hmm. So in many cases, they created their own. Mm -hmm. We listened. We listened to them and realized, okay, Clearly, there's a reason why you want to get from point A to point B. We see it. We understand it. We're going to fix it. They and voted, we did. They and voted did. with their feet. They really did. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we listened to them. And I think uh, all of those, those elements of Little Round Top, those maybe hidden nuggets, um, are really going to be, for, for, for folks who want to go see them, they can easily go see them now. In fact, in fact, we're encouraging them to go see them now. No, this will be fantastic. Yeah. Well, I can see how people are excited. Yeah. Okay, just, uh, just another look here. This is looking um, from the north end of Sykes, looking south back up to the, uh, the, park, the, the formal parking area. The, the car parking here in this photo would be on the right, and the bus parking would be on the left. There you go. I think that means what we've come to the end. <laughs> Jason, thanks a lot for going over those pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really exciting, and uh, you're just building that up the excitement, mm -hmm. and you're teasing us with all these activities <laughs> that's going to occur that you're not allowed to tell us. Incredible and exciting, and a lot of action this summer. Yeah, I, I hope this is the best summer I, for the I, park. In fact, I still have a couple more if you if you okay. if you want to hear about them. Mm -hmm. um, over at Eisenhower National Historic Site, they are going to be conducting the first ever Easter egg roll. Um, that's gonna take place on March 30th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's free, open to the public, and all the details uh, about this event are on the Eisenhower National Historic Site website. Of course, this is a very popular event in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. on the, on the Yes, the South Lawn of the White House and the Eisenhowers were involved in that during uh, his eight years as president. Um, so this is, they're, they're bringing that idea now 
from Washington, D.C. in the south lawn of the White House to the farm, to mm -hmm. Ike and Mamie's farm. So they're, they're really looking forward to that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of fun, a lot of excitement uh, happening, kind of swirling around as, as we get closer to that event as well. And that will be open up to the public? Absolutely. Is it going to be a limited amount of people? Uh, come on in. Bring your kids. Bring your kids, yeah. yeah. But again, check the website to see what, uh, what activities are going on over the course of that, of, of that event. Um, one other thing that we, we started to talk about maybe about this time last year was the historic leasing program where visitors could actually come in and be able to stay, rent, uh, lease, if you will, um, in some of the battlefield structures. Um, and we kind of hit a hiccup uh, last year, uh, but we've righted the ship and uh, we should be ready to go with that sometime spring, summer, uh, so here in the next couple months, uh, look for information on that uh, hitting the airwaves. Uh, so we'll probably be talking about this as, as we get closer as well. And talking about immersive. Yes. To actually be able to stay overnight in these homes. Yep. We're going to have uh, two of the houses uh, down on the south end of the battlefield. Uh, the Bushman house uh, was made available before COVID. Um, to great success, but then the pandemic kind of put the, uh, kind of closed that door, if you will. And uh, so the Bushman House is gonna come back, as well as its neighbor, the Slider House, uh, the small uh, white house a little bit farther to the east, a little bit closer to Devil's Den and Big Round Top. So a little, so to, in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're neighbors, if you will. So those are the first two houses that are gonna be made available for visitors to, uh, stay in. Uh, again, that's coming spring, summer. Spring, People summer. inquiring about it yet? Um, slowly but surely. Um, we want to get all of our ducks in a row first before we make all the formal announcements, but just to let folks know it is, it is coming. Because again, there, we tried to get it up off the ground this time last year, mm -hmm. ran into a couple bumps in the road, got them all ironed out. There you go. We're ready to go. Mm -hmm. We're ready to go here in the next couple months. And then the last bit of information that uh, folks are also usually uh, very interested this time of year is an event called Doors Open, where we take a, a number of either houses or barns and open those doors to the public and uh, allow the visiting public uh, to come in and see uh, the insides of uh, some of these structures. We haven't determined exactly which ones. Uh, we have a couple in mind, but we're working through the the logistics to make sure there's enough parking and again safety is is an issue with with some of these locations but that is going to happen on saturday may 11th so it'll be just one day it is just one day for about i think four or six hours um yeah something like 10 to 2 or 10 to 3 or something like that so mm -hmm. again the, the the structures have yet to be determined and the hours also have yet to be determined, but that's coming. We have at least a, a hard date on the calendar, so you can, it's not penciled in, mm -hmm. it's written in stone. We're gonna do it on May 11th. Okay, so there are two really unique experiences that I'm sure people are gonna get pumped about. Mm -hmm. And there's limits to, well, you only have a sort, certain amount of time to be able to go in, and, uh -huh. and these doors aren't always open. And right. Wow. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. great. It's exciting. I told you. Yeah. I told yeah. you. Plus, there's things that you're not telling us. There are a couple things that we're not telling and, us, And, you know, uh, Jason, I, I bet Jason is going to be like this every time he comes into us. <laughs> He's going to tease us with, with these immersive experiences, but we have to guess what they're going to be. Yes. So, hey, um... We took a lot of the time away from you today, um, being here, sharing the experience uh, of, of the park and um, all the vision that you have and, and things that are going on. Thanks a lot for, for doing that. Happy to be here. Okay. So is there anything you want to say to uh, the people watching us before uh, we part today? Uh, you know, again, just to, to reiterate, folks, that uh, 2024 is really looking to be uh, a very fun, a very exciting uh, year, uh, both in uh, different 
programs uh, and different aspects going on physically at both parks, at Gettysburg and at Eisenhower. Uh, but there's also some other uh, news that's probably going to be coming out. To, um, can't say when. Uh, some of the stuff is out of our control. Uh, but it is going to be exciting. It is going to be fun. And, I, and of course, Little Round Top is going to open uh, at some point later uh, this, uh, this year. Uh, late spring to early summer is still the window for that. Uh, and yes, that does mean, uh, at least we're hoping, uh, we're 99.99% sure uh, that Little Round Top will in fact be open before the battle an anniversary coming up July 1, 2, and 3. So there's a lot coming, uh, some of which we can talk about, some of which we'll catch up on the next time I'm in. And this is community. This is community. This is our community. Uh, we're very um, excited and grateful that we live in an area with such a rich heritage. And there's opportunities for people to volunteer. Yep, that, that's, uh, that's always an opportunity. But even that program, uh, our volunteer program is going to be uh, good. Good things are happening with that moving forward as well. Again. Can't get into any, any of the details yet because uh, those haven't been ironed out just yet, but that's coming later this year as well. And you know, Jason, there's people in our area just just love the history. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they, they're all but obsessed. And some of them would like to become volunteers. Mm -hmm. What's the opportunity for them to get involved and how would they do that? Well, the first thing to do is just simply write the park. And at the, at the bottom of every uh, web page for both Gettysburg and Eisenhower, scroll down to the bottom and there's a contact us link. That opens up a, 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 a new window. Email us and we'll make sure that uh, your email gets to the right folks. Adams County um, is an exceptional place. We have rich history, not only in the Civil War, but we have history with uh, Revolutionary War. We have history with uh, the Native Americans. And uh, the nice thing is there's a lot of people uh, who live here who gets excited about that. And uh, uh, the communication services there at the park does a great job of creating immersive experiences for individuals. And uh, there's other groups trying to do the same with the other areas. Um, so if, if you are looking for something to do this summer, there's all kinds of things to do at the park. So thanks for watching this segment of Open House where um, we had the monthly privilege of having Jason Martz, the communication specialist for the Gettysburg Military National Park and I, I guess I should have said the Gettysburg National Military Park and the Eisenhower National Historic Site. Thanks again for coming and being with us today, Jason. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yep. Until the next time that we have a chance to share some amazing people from Adams County that's making this a great place to live, you be, care, you be kind, be kind, be careful, be safe, and thanks for watching us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.